David, last autumn we were kneeling in these tiny little plants within the plots. What I want to do is quickly show you we've broken down, if you like, the, the, the different management options. This one has been sown with sterile brome and flowers and left to its own devices and it's basically tearing itself to bits. This one is even worse. Many farmers throw fertiliser beyond the crop edge into the margin. So this one has just gone very high in nutrient, collapsed and become sort of a, a soggy mess. So the annuals like the poppies and the nasty grasses you don't want. So it's no, I mean, the, these yeah. love it, yeah. but there won't be a year two. <laughs> now this one is the marriage of selective herbicides and mowing. All the perennials are in here. So it's the farming skills with a bit of mowing, with a bit of spraying. This one next year will dwarf them. We're going to leave this for two years. Those will be a mess. And this will be a 15-yard block of blazing colour. Perennial. Perennial. So unless you've worked it out right for the farm, the farm could really wrong and increase the problem. I believe that this is a crop, the same as that. The skills he has to manage this, he's got down to a fine art and we help him. These are the skills that we've developed so that this crop can be managed successfully with the skills he's got on the farm. Well, you know, poor old Marriott's got a problem because to the average panther, that looks great, full of colour. But it's also full of the very things the farmer doesn't want in amongst his crop. Now, they may not look very good at the moment, but look, oh, he's got salad bonnet and oh, self heal, doing extreme. Come on, butt in. There's 26, we've counted them. 26 different flowering species in here and about four in that one. So when this lot comes in, I have to give you 10 out of 10 for this and one out of 10 for that. Well, one out of 10 would be generous, David. <laughs> <laughs> Well, seeing is believing. Now, remind me, exactly what was the challenge? Mine was to increase the biodiversity on the farm. Mine was to maintain farm profitability. So we're going to wait, what, two or three months till you've done all that boring paperwork, then you'll let us know. You've got to be patient, we'll let you know. Now, Mary, you... <laughs> I'm amazed. I mean, they're all here. The perennials, self-heal, corn, flour, lots and lots of bees, other insects, and I can hear the skylarks. How do you do it? Well, David, it's part of tomorrow's farming. I've just taken a walk round 120 hectares of the farm, and I can see and I can hear that the buzz of biodiversity is back, and that makes me very happy. But this also makes the farmer happy, because in a normal two-year period, he'll put down 36,000 kilos of muriate of potash. But now, with precision farming, the right amount in the right place, he saved 8,000 kilos. And that um, makes... 22.22% saving. Good news for the environment and good news for the farmer's bank balance. Well, I feel very confident that, that not only have we made progress here, we've recorded the progress, certainly from the figures that ITE have produced in the first year, we've increased biodiversity. But the crop and the margin are now meeting, and apart from a bit of autumn spraying, we're now where we need to be getting set up for the following spring. Our business is not just about inputs for growers, it's about the quality of food production that we're involved with. So we're helping farmers manage the process of producing food. So, you know, if you take and encompass the, the whole process, then it's pretty important that UAP understand the implications that process has on not only the grower and the consumer in the food chain, but also on the environment. Marek's an enthusiast. He gives us all energy, he gives us all the broader thought process. You know, he takes us away from, you know, what our job used to be into what it's becoming. We've turned full circle on this lovely winter's morning. And as far as biodiversity is concerned, well, I'm happy because the UAP team have won. But what about farm profits? What, what I've done here is taken a single field, field eight, on the farm, and look at that field in 1998 before any environmental issues were impinged on that oh, yeah, yeah. And then I've taken the same field in 99 with all the environmental work that we've done on the farm imposed on that field and looked at the figures again. And if you look, the income in 99 with environmental work has actually increased above 98. The subsidies gained from the environmental parts of the farm, together with the crop value, we've still made a profit. 
we can see here the reduction of £39.60 uh, per hectare, less inputs. That almost unbelievable. I mean, did you think you could do that? Well, no, I didn't, to be fair. Not to that level. Is that good news for the waterways? Good news, well, good news always, except for the bloke who sells you the chemicals. Has he gone grey-haired? No, he's not. I mean, we, we've used chemicals still to produce the level of crop we have, and uh, the chemical distributor, one of which I work for, has to be satisfied with that level of input. I didn't think the biodiversity bit was possible, but that's amazing. <laughs> well, there are the figures. There's the proof. So we have reduced inputs. Well, none of you think that was anything to do with me at all. I just thought up the challenge about biodiversity. All the other good news has come through from the fact that this farm knows about its farmland, knows about its roots, and put good practice or invented new good practice in farming. That is quite fantastic. All right, the beer's good, the bread's good, and the buzz of biodiversity is good. But what do ITE tell us? David, this is the first lot of information that's come through. Three new butterflies, marbled white, small copper and small heath. Now, the habitats we've created, rich in pollen and nectar, brings these onto the farm for the first time. We've taken the skylark population up 800%. And, of course, if they're there, that means all the creepy crawlies and things there, which means all the plants that they feed on there, mm. so you get the whole food chain built up. Well, I think the exciting thing is that, that ITE have still got a bit more number crunching to do. So we may have even more good news. Yes, I think the, the good news is just going to keep coming. Can biodiversity on this farm be increased by implementing Marek's work on an island within a field? Does it have to be linked to a margin? Does it have to be linked to woodland, for instance, so that there is an avenue on which wildlife will travel to the island? We don't know the answer to that, but we'll find out this coming year. A marker for the future way to farm. Farm this bit for wildlife, and that bit for production. Waste not, want not. Expand that to the whole of Britain and we're winning. If every one of our farmers was to plant a two metre herbridge strip, we would create a new 43,000 hectare nature reserve. I really think that this is an opportunity where profitable farming and practical conservation come together to make a massive environmental difference in our countryside. <laughs>